And happy Thursday, second grade, and anyone else uh, reading today. Um, as I promised today, I'm going to do John, Paul, George, and Ben. Now, this is a little this is a little bit different kind of book, and I'll explain. Famous historical figures, at least in the American tradition, uh, we we know their history. And we understand their lives, but we also kind of have made up some folk tales about them. Folk tales are just tales that try to teach a lesson or try to maintain a tradition. And a lot of times we do that with our historical figures. For example, there's a famous folk tale about George Washington. Said that he threw a silver dollar across the Delaware River. Well, it's a wonderful story talking about how, you know, you know, how good he was, you know, physically fit, you know, and athletic. But it's obviously not true because at the time that he would have done this, there was no such thing as a silver dollar. So, as you can see, uh, some of these stories try to tell us what the character was like or what the actual historical figure was like, but it's not necessarily real. Another famous one about George Washington was that he chopped down a cherry tree on his father's farm. And when asked about it, George said, I, Father, I cannot tell a lie. I, yes, I did. Trying to, trying to remind us that he was honest as well as, and he always told the truth. There are similar stories about uh, Abe Lincoln. They call him Honest Abe because he couldn't tell a lie. Well, you know, these are, these are how some of these folk tales work. Well, this book, takes some famous historical figures, and tells us, kind of relates a folktale type story uh, to us through uh, the pages. This is also wonderfully illustrated and written by Lane Smith. So if you liked yesterday's book, I think you'll like today's. So now we're going to dive into John, Paul, George, and Ben. Once there were four lads, John, Paul, George, and Ben. And then we have a little asterisk here, and it says, make that five lads. There was also independent Tom, always off doing his own thing. John was a bold lad. Means he was very, very... Outspoken. At the start of every school year, the students were asked to write their names on the chalkboard. Every year, it was the same story. John, his teacher would say, you have a lovely penmanship. John, your confidence in, is refreshing. But, come on, John. We don't need to be able to read it from space. That's John Hancock, one of the signers of the Constitution, uh, the, the uh, Declaration of Independence. One of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Paul was a noisy lad. Before fun was invented, people joined bell ringing clubs. As a member of at Boston's Old North Church, Paul spent hours practicing in the belfry tower. Remember, this was before fun was invented. Over time, that bell ringing took a toll on young Paul. All day his head was filled with loud bings and bongs. He had to practically scream just to hear himself talk. Now, that's fine around the belfry. But not at work. As you can see, he works at, it's Paul Revere, and he's going into Revere's shop. Extra large underwear? Sure, we have some. Let's see, large, large, extra large. Here they are, great, big, extra large underwear. Paul was like a bullhorn in a china shop. Your wig? Yes, it's coming. 
and your polka dot shirts are coming and the pink and the pink britches are coming. It took many years and a midnight ride for people to finally appreciate that special talent. The Redcoats are coming! Everyone except that big underwear lady, she was still mad. George was an honest lad. One day, he took his shiny new hatchet and chopped down his family's cherry tree. When his father discovered the tree, he asked, Son, do you know who killed this beautiful little cherry tree? I cannot tell a lie, answered George. "'Twas I who chopped down this cherry tree. Then run to my arms, dearest boy, cried his father, for you have paid me for it a thousand times over with your honesty. Really? said George. In that case, in that case, when I tell you that I've taken out the apple orchard, leveled the barn, and made kindling of your carriage, you will be a wealthy, wealthy man. Ben was a clever lad. Not only did he have a saying for every situation, he generously shared them with anyone, anywhere, at any time. Fish and visitors stink after three days. He considered it his duty to provide frequent free advice. The sleeping fox catches no poultry. Those who in quarrels interpose must often wipe a bloody nose. If your head is waxed, don't walk in the sun. Three can keep a secret if two of them are dead. The townsfolk were so taken by his generosity, they came up with a saying especially for Ben. Please shut your yap! I like it, said Ben. Short and to the point. Work a fox or a turkey in there and I think you've got something. Tom was an independent lad. One day, his teacher, Mr. Douglas, asked the class to make birdhouses by gluing macaroni to ye old balsa wood. Tom happily ignored him and used traditional building materials and a non and a neoclassical design. When the class made a palm tree, Tom took one look and said, "Not on your life." Then he quickly left. Sketch his own tree. Young Thomas, fumed the teacher, er, fumed teacher Douglas, would you mind explaining to the class why you insist on working so independently? Certainly, said Tom. In fact, I've taken the liberty to list the very reasons. 
Fear not, sir. I've used small words for the benefit of the dullards. Basically saying he used simple language because he thought some of his classmates might be stupid. Tom learned the power of his words that day. Mr. Douglas told him to pursue all the life, liberty, and happiness he wanted. Independently in the corner, the other students pursued lunch. Looks like you got a timeout, huh? The rest is history. Say, you want, say you want a revolution? Well, John, Paul, George, Ben, and Tom sure did. In the in April of 1775, they got one. The redcoats were coming. In fact, King George III's army was marching to Lexington and Concord to arrest John and the other Sons of Liberty. Fortunately, Paul Revere was a noisy man. After his midnight ride, every minute man, woman, and child knew who was coming and what they'd be wearing, and it was the start of the Revolutionary War. Americans needed to formally state their separation from the king. Who better than Thomas Jefferson, an independent man, to write the Declaration of Independence? Simply signing such a document was treasonous and dangerous. Ben Franklin, a clever man, said it best. We must all hang together, he quipped, or assuredly we shall all hang separately. These are a little more traditional paintings of the those three. One might think twice about signing his name. Not John Hancock. A bold man, he was the first to describe his autograph. And, man, just look at the size of that John Hancock. His is the largest and most prominent signature on the Declaration of Independence. The war was won thanks to General Washington. Everyone thought he would make a great king for the new United States of America, but George Washington was an honest man. The last thing we need is another King George, he said. President George, however, has a nice ring to it. <clears throat> Ye old epilogue. George didn't live in the White House like all the other presidents. He was asked to live in New York City, where there weren't so many trees. Okay, so as you can see, these are some fun little tales about some of the the men who helped found the United States of America as we know it. And sometimes it's just really fun to uh, come up with stories and ideas of what might have happened uh, just to show what kind of quality they had, what was important about their life. But also we can have a little chuckle about it, too. Well, here we are at the end of, of this book. And as I said yesterday, I'm not going to ask anybody to write anything anymore because you're going to hand in your notebook either today or tomorrow, and then I can start grading some of your responses. So, going forward, this is just for fun. I hope you had a good time. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, and I'll have a whole new book for you, obviously. And we're just going to have a little bit of fun writing this out to the end of, uh, of my time on this channel. So we'll see you later. Stay safe, stay healthy, try to get a little exercise safely, and have a very good day.